I do have a good feeling because today we're going to chat about a filing system. What a fun topic. Welcome everyone. It's Wednesday, 6 o'clock Pacific, and we are here for a money date. My name is Anna. For those of you who are here first time, thanks so much for joining me. It is awesome to have you here. Hi, Jennifer. Good to have you here. I do have a good feeling. It's been a great day. Um, I'm playing, um, so I'll share with you just in just a bit. Um, I'm playing Florida. Um, I went to a conference. Hi, Noreen. Good to have you here. Um, I went to a conference last week in Las Vegas. This is 10X Growth Con, and it's actually awesome. I was thinking about this today that I've never been to a conference before where they had um, a uh, you know professional, either, either a singer or a band actually perform right, right at a conference. A lot of times, if there was anything, it might have been sort of in, in the social hours. So this is, was cool. This was awesome because Florida was part of that um, uh, presentation so guess what um, only uh, not only we got to sit at a conference all day but we also, uh, also got to dance so anyway um, that's why I was playing to uh, um, a little bit of those songs in the background because I like to dance now we are here today to talk about our finances this is what money date is all about for those of you who are new awesome to to have you here, I am extremely honored that you are spending a few minutes of your precious time with me, but it's more importantly that you are spending as much time with yourself checking in to make sure that your finances are on track. Now, why do we have money dates and why do we meet once a week? Because our lives are so busy, but we still need to stay on track. Now, there's a couple of things that we do um, to have, I'm just gonna turn this down, so it's not as loud. Um, there's a couple of things that we need to be tracking on the weekly basis. Now, tomorrow is the first of the month. This is actually also happens to be the time of the month where I sit down and I do sort of a global review of my finances. Now, every week I ask you to keep track of three things. The number one is how much income did you make? Number two, what were your expenses for the week? It's really easy to keep track of your expenses on a weekly basis. Um, look at the credit card bill so far, right? For the, just the seven days. Look at your checking account. You, can, you should have that data at the tip of your fingers, okay? I, have, I usually have it on my phone. Hi, Rhiannon, good to have you here. So, um, and then the last thing is your savings, okay? What are your savings goal and how are you doing? Now, income, spending, and savings are the three things that I should, if I ever knock on your door in the middle of the night, you should know the answers to those questions. That is how critical it is. Now, for those of you who are watching this for the first time, um, there is a system you can establish for yourself where you can easily check those data points. I'll talk some more about it later today in our session, but, Get an, get an app on your phone, mint.com, personal capital. There's a couple of other programs out there that allow you to aggregate your accounts, allow you to pull spending transactions. Hi, Wanda, good to have you here. So that you can actually have this data available. And then why do I want this? I wanted those answers for myself because I wanted to feel like I was in control of my finances. The basic things, okay, because trust me, I am focused on working with my clients and helping them with their money decisions, but I had to have a system for myself where it was not a burden. It was something that I can do easy um, without having to kind of shy away because I think that's what most people do. We shy away from, from wanting to be on the top of our finances. So we got that out of the way. If you haven't done it yet, please start, start tracking those numbers, okay? Now, I want to do, I've shared this a little bit already, but one of the things that we discussed on the money date is our wins, okay? So we'll look back at the last week and we see and we think about, we step back and we think about what has been awesome, what has been good, what are you grateful for, okay? Actually, it was interesting at this conference, the 10X Growth Con, and this is actually my win for the entire week. It's been, it's been a phenomenal experience to go to a conference with 9,000 other people. This was in Las Vegas in Mandalay Bay, um, huge arena, right? And it was just amazing to see how many people are actually out there wanting to change their life. The conference was um, mainly centered around 
uh, personal growth, but a lot of business as well. Because if you're a business owner or you're working for yourself or you're thinking to start a business, you know what goes in the first sort of planning um, uh, when you kind of get in those um, in those shoes is your own personal self-management and self-development. So a lot of that was covered, but it, it was just phenomenal speakers. Um, Tim Grover, one of my favorites. Uh, Damon John, he actually had a birthday, um, so right on that day. So it was awesome, right? How I mean, how awesome is it to celebrate his birthday? Um, Damon John is the, from the Shark Tank. Um, and a whole bunch of other, other very cool and interesting speakers who shared their experiences, who um, had similar challenges. So it was just phenomenal. And of course, Florida concert. Um, and then, you know, the, the guy who organized the conference um, uh, and his wife, uh, Grant and Elena Cardona, are one of the wonderful uh, people that I follow um, and, you know, uh, respect dearly. So that is, has been my win because there's been a, a lot of transformational points that I learned for myself and I met a lot of wonderful people. So I want you to think about what you do day in, day out, right? What is it that you do? And so one of the things that came up at the conference is actually a speaker brought up is somebody wanted to ask a question, right? And so um, the first thing the speaker said, you know what, I am happy to answer your question, but why don't you tell everyone what are you grateful for? And I was like, wow, all right, this is something that I am uh, luckily, I wasn't asking the question, or maybe not luckily, but um, I was happy to hear that because I want you to start thinking about those things um, as they relate to your life, as they relate to your relationships, and more importantly, is everything we know that tie into our finances. So let's pause back and think about what has been awesome. So let me know. As you guys are hopping on, please say hello in the chat. I, um, that's the only way I know that you watch the video. If you found this useful, please share it out. It does help spread the word. Um, and I am always, always appreciative for that. So thanks so much. All right, let's get into the actual topic of why we're here. So filing system, right? I, you know, I was thinking about what to talk about. So I think this is a good time of the year. Spring is almost here, right? We always, I was actually thinking the other day that I need to do um, a closet clean up a little bit, but that's, you know, that's one side of the filing things, right? To get rid of things that I don't really need anymore. How about we look at our financial system, right? How, how about we look at what we actually keep and what we don't keep? Hi, Jim, thanks for watching. So this is a perfect time of the year. And if you don't get to do it now, I think any time of the year would be great, but setting up a system that you can actually keep track and you can feel good about, okay? So, filing system for your finances. Now, because we live in the modern world, a lot of what we can accomplish today is available for us to use online tools. So, that's why I highly stress out that things like Mint.com, Quicken, or Personal Capital, they do serve a big, big part in how my filing system looks like and what my clients are actually doing with theirs as well. So, but I want to talk about two different sides. I want to talk about the, the traditional filing cabinet kind of system, right? That you use, hi April, good to have you here, that you use to set up your sort of core and your basis. And then we can build on with that, with what can work um, if you have an online setup, all right? So if you don't have a filing system yet or you're sort of things and statements and documents are kind of floating here and there, perhaps you need to pay attention so that you can get organized. Now, I know we are in the midst of the tax season, so this is another reason, right? A lot of our clients say, all right, I'm gonna wait to come see you until the next month because I'm going through the organizational uh, part of finding all the documents and then getting ready for the taxes. I feel like if you can tie that, with um, along with setting up the system for yourself, it's gonna be a wonderful experience. It does not have to be stressful. And I think a lot of times we get stressed out because mail keeps coming in. For some of us, the, um, the, the statements are delivered electronically and they just get lost in the mail. Um, and I see this a lot. Every time I ask clients to provide documents, they're like, they're looking at me with, you know, with their big eyes saying, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get you the, these, uh, you know, this information? So let's work through this and see um, what can you set up for yourself. 
Now, if you have tips for me to share and use and what you've set up for yourself and what works, please let me know. I'm not stuck in a certain way, um, but I've seen, I've seen some of the different ways uh, people keep track of their finances, even in the, sh even in the shoe box, that works too, <laughs> as long as it works for you, okay? All right, so paper filing, all right. Now, I want you to think about um, kind of, so if, if you were to set up a system for yourself, right? I have a filing cabinet in the office, right? And I have a, a small filing cabinet at, at home to keep um, you know, some of my personal files um, where, you know, where they're in the safe and secure place. So if you were to set up a filing cabinet where there's just one little drawer, right? Where maybe it's a, like accordion type of folder that has sections in it, whatever it will be. Think about four different sections that you may want to have there. And I'm going to go through e uh, each of them, but those are the sections that you can actually file certain paperwork in. Now, certain types of files is something that we may need to keep permanently. So if you are gonna go for a sort of mini condensed kind of accordion or you know file that extends, you may wanna make sure that it sits in the proper place. So in case, I don't know, your house burns down, there's a flood or there's earthquake, that those files aren't destroyed permanently. And I'll talk about, I have a tip in terms of how we can maybe work around that, okay? All right, so here's the four different sections that you can set up in your filing cabinet. Let's refer to, to whatever that place that you're keeping your files to as a filing cabinet. So number one would be personal, all right? What do I mean by personal? So things like social security card, birth certificate, deed to your house, a title to your car. Some of these documents that you actually need to keep almost forever, but you know, maybe for a long period of time. So have a folder. I am a big, um, don't have anything on here uh, in my on my desk, but I'm, I'm a big user of manila folders, okay? Because I can write at the top of the folder what the title is for the, for the content that goes in there and it's easy to find. So have a folder that has tho those kinds of documents. Now, some people choose to keep more sensitive things like social security card and you know, some of these, what I feel like, uh, pretty important documents in the safe, which is fine too, as long as you can get to that safe and know how to, you know, how to open it. So maybe that those documents could be in a more secure spot, but at least pull them all together. Now, sometimes I've seen people keep their tax returns because tax returns are recommended to be kept for seven years because that's as much, that's how long the IRS has in order for, um, for them, they give themselves that much time to go back and audit your returns. So if you wanted to make sure that you can go back seven years and provide whatever documentation um, that you need, that's uh, a prudent uh, practice to put in place. After that, shredding should be your best friend. You do not throw away sensitive documents. You do not throw away financial documents. That's a big practice we have uh, in place here at Main Street, and I, uh, I do that personally as well. Shredding is available in a lot of different places. You can actually um, either send, uh, I think it's either by weight or it's box per box or per bag. I've I had it done all kinds of ways. So make sure that that's what you utilize, not throwing away the sensitive kind of documents because we talked about this a while ago, identity theft is big. So we want to make sure we protect our personal information. Okay, we've got our file number one, which is called personal, right? A section of the filing cabinet. Number two would be emergency and protection folder. So I want you to think about things that would be necessary in, um, or you would need to pull in case of emergency. So what comes to mind, all right? Insurance policies, right? homeowner's policy, automobile policy. I want you to make a house inventory list. I talked about this yesterday, right? What kind of things do you have in your house? This is more useful or also useful in terms of making sure that if you have valuable items you can and you wanna insure them, you actually do an inventory. Somebody suggested um, yesterday that uh, doing a video, record, right? Do write everything by hand and have a list, right? Inventory list but do a short video. It is so easy these days to do that. So um, insurance policies, 
maybe inventory of your household possessions, and then, you know, things like warranties. Do you have a um, do you have a warranty for your TV? Do you have a warranty for you know whatever valuable items that are there that you think you're gonna keep for a long time? Make sure that that's all consolidated into that one folder. Now. Folder number three should be devoted to financials, okay? So I would wanna, hi Diana, good to have you here. So I want you to think about financials, right? Is, are, are these kinds of things. Credit card statements. Now, we gotta talk a little bit later in terms of what the online filing system looks like. But for those of you who are still getting documents in the mail and credit cards are one of those that come in the mail, that would be part of where um, you would want to file. So credit card statements, you know, um, gas and electric bills, just whatever it is that you get in the mail that kind of relates to your finances, right? That maybe you have to pay on a monthly basis, that's going into your financial folder. Um, and one, one thing to point out here is that most of these statements are probably best to keep for a year. After that, you can shred them. I see no reason for you to have stacks and stacks of paper of, of files that you aren't really, you know, really going to use and there's no benefit. Pay stubs, right? Investment account statements, bank statements. So those are the things that you, if you're getting those statements in the mail, have a system where maybe you have a folder for each type of the, uh, of the accounts that you collect in statements for. So you can reference them back. But again, quarterly statements for some of the, uh, sometimes are uh, best used. So shred um you know maybe monthly statements only keep quarterly but once a year sort of do a clean up and inventory now um things like for your iras your 401k so anything that um anything that is not gonna serve you a purpose 12 months from now i don't think you need to keep it all right now folder or section of the filing cabinet number four is called in case of death so it is almost inevitable that we're all gonna come to that point. So first of all, which is a um, pretty sad statistic, but 50% of population do not have estate planning documents in place. Things like a will, a durable power of attorney, right? That's a, that's a form that dictates who is gonna be in charge of your, all of your financial accounts, who's gonna make decisions for you when you can't. Healthcare form, who's gonna make medical decisions for you? right? And then if you need to have a trust and so forth, insurance policies, life insurance policies, um, if you have private disability policies, long-term care policies, those things should be all aggregated because uh, particularly for insurance policies, you're going to have contracts, right? And those are the documents that you keep in place for a very long time. So now we've got our, so let me just recap. We've got a filing cabinet or a small, um, small drawer, however you want to do it. And you've got these four sections. As, and just think about this, as the month go by and statements come in, you should be, if you have the system set up and these folders are labeled, it should be pretty easy for you to file them. Now, for those of you who are listening and thinking, oh my gosh, Anna, you nuts? Why would we want to collect paper statements? And, you know, my friends, I'm with you. I don't think I want to collect paper statements either. I try uh, as much as I can, as hard as I can to be paperless. So, therefore, for uh, even for investment account statements, bank account statements, savings account statements, all of that stuff, I've subscribed to receive statements electronically. Now, I also urge you to have a system in your email where when these things come in and they come in, credit card statements actually is one of those that I, I just, I was, I've been getting uh, my cycle for the credit cards usually end uh, on the 25th and 26th. So right after that, I'm, I'm getting uh, the, the uh, end of month statements. So, but I don't want you just to say, all right, well, Anna said I need to have an electronic statement of these particular documents and really never have a sense or a system to check. So set up folders within your email where these uh, statements can be filed so that when there's a question, right, or you're trying to check or you're doing your uh, monthly reconciliation of your expenses, for example, you can go back and check, okay? So don't just opt out for electronic delivery of these documents because you don't want to see them. I don't think that's a good idea. You want to streamline it, right? But you still want to stay on the top of it and you still want to be in control. So not seeing it and, and it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, 
it feels awesome, but I think it's not a prudent strategy. Okay, now before I get into talking a little bit more about the online system, I highly, highly recommend, even though if you have perfectly organized drawer, right, and all of your documents are looking good, you are a good filer, everything is looking fine, consider scanning some of these important documents, okay? Scanning these documents and then using one of those online cloud storage programs where you can actually have a backup copy, okay? Because again, as I mentioned earlier, what if there's a fire? What if there's a flood in the house or in the apartment that you live in and these documents are not gonna be uh, recoverable? So how, what are you gonna do, all right? So have a backup copy of everything that actually exists. Now, I probably a bit too overwhelming to have to scan you know, your monthly statements, that, that's why opting in for maybe having both paper copies and electronic copies come, um, come to you on a monthly basis. But things like your, if you have estate planning documents in place, a lot of times attorneys do provide um, electronic copies, so save those. Not only save them, but do share them with the, with the people that are really are important in your life and they need to know where those things are. So if it's, if it's between couples, make sure that each of the spouses know um, if it's your parents or if it's your kids, make sure that whoever needs to know knows how to access your system because it's like the worst thing to do is you worked really hard to set it up and then if something goes wrong and your loved ones cannot get um, a hold of it. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about online filing systems. So I sort of talk about it with you every time we meet for a money date, but think about this. Um, Programs such as Mint.com, Quicken, Personal Capital, because we live, in the mo we live in the modern world. Technology and all of these different apps and programs allow us to have all kinds of things at the tip of our fingers, right? For the ease of administration, for the ease of use. Now, if, I, if you think about how to bring those programs in place for yourself to have an online system, that's what I'm talking about, okay? so. If you think about it, you can actually set up a dashboard in all of these programs that allow you to aggregate. Aggregate your spending accounts, right? Your credit cards and your checking accounts so you can have a good budget in place to track against your actual. So that's number one, right? All of those systems do that. But the other piece that we haven't quite discussed is, and all of them, Mint, Quicken, and Personal Capital, they have those they're called dashboards. So you can actually list all of your assets. You can connect all of your accounts. Um, some of them actually allow you to have what's called a vault where you can scan your documents. Like if, as I was mentioning earlier, scanning your uh, very important documents and ha having them stored in the cloud. You need to be sure that that is a safe and secure place for those documents. But if you think about it, you can almost like create a dashboard where everything is there. You can add your personal assets. So. If that's the system that you desire, it's available. I still think that even though if you transition to fully or almost, you know, having everything that way online, is you're still gonna end up getting things in the mail, right? And I've, you know, probably over the last few years, we, Yuri and I have significantly reduced the amount of mail we get. So it's mostly, you know, junk stuff. Um, maybe there like a few bills that are not sort of on auto pay, like, uh, my, renew my DMV, like renew the car registration, or um, I think the last one I paid was just a medical bill that is not something that I pay on a monthly basis. So what do you do with that kind of stuff, right, that, that, that when it comes in? So I do have a folder that I keep, right, that I sort of put all of those loose, you know, um, odd kind of uh, expenses or receipts or bills that come in. And then at the end of the year, so I was actually going through um, one of the folders earlier um, because, uh, because of that medical uh, bill that I had to pay. Um, also, around tax time, when you're getting ready to file your taxes and you're organizing, right? You probably are getting 1099s in the mail, your W-2s. That's a good time to clean up your folders, right? Shred everything that you don't need. Revisit what are the, what are the contents. If you have those four major folders set up for yourself, revisit what's, um, what's been updated um, shred what you don't need. It's, it feels, as I'm talking about it, it probably feels overwhelming to think about, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get through all of this? 
All right, so start with small things, right? Start with thinking, okay, here's my sort of every month kind of operational things. Here's my bills to pay and make a little pile for that. Make a folder for those that you're gonna kind of tackle first, okay? Because sometimes if things are all over the place and you are just not as organized, it could feel overwhelming and I, I, can, I, I can believe that you're not gonna wanna do that. And then start thinking more globally. Okay, what are the, some of the important documents that I need to pull in one place? Even if you just have it all in one folder, that's already half the battle, okay? And then I highly advocate that you set up an online system for yourself. Not only is it gonna help you with your budgeting and tracking expenses, but it's actually pretty cool. It's like, just think about it as a computer game or whatever game that it is that you're playing. You want to know your score. You want to know where you stand. And the tools and technology provide you with that. So that's what I've got for you today. Let me know what are you guys using in terms of your filing system. How often do you revisit it? Do you like what are you t t you know tips and suggestions in terms of what works for you? I'm curious to know. Maybe there are other stuff that I can do. I'd love to get rid of the filing cabinet um, or maybe <laughs> maybe consolidate it a little bit, but. Um, at the moment, it's still not quite possible. So um, I'll share a quote with you before I close. Um, but thanks for watching, everybody. Share this out if you found it helpful. Thanks, thanks for hopping on. So Benjamin Franklin said, for every minute you spent organizing, an hour will be saved. So put a few minutes into organizing your life so that you can free up more time for doing things that you actually love. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you next week.